What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the Cutlass Project build series where I take this Cutlass Cruiser wagon that I found in this dude's backyard that's been collecting dust for a couple years and start resurrecting this thing. I'm building this car to be my next power tour car. I'm a big fan of wagons and these cars are super nostalgic to me so I really wanted to try and build one of these things. These cars are super unique and I'm really into that. In the last few videos, you guys saw me tear this car apart. I built engine mounts for the 3000 and the F23 5-speed manual, built the exhaust for the turbo to make that thing fit in this car, then built an intake to actually get this thing placed where I wanted it to be. In the most recent video, I pulled the engine out of the car to start tearing out the brake lines and power steering lines. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and sort out the engine, get the clutch bolted onto it, get the top end built onto it, and get this thing in the car for hopefully the last time. And then I'll show you guys how I built quill brackets for a quail near plug conversion for a 3800. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into this project. Well, I've put this off for too long and uh, it's about time to get this engine prepared for the car. Uh, I bought this off of some guy. I have no clue if it's good or not. I've had bad luck with these things. Like everyone I've picked up from somebody has not been in good shape. You know, you end up with cylinder walls that are rusty and just not stored properly. So I'm hoping that this one is better than the last two I bought. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the heads and I'm gonna see what the cylinders look like. If they look good, then we are golden. This is an L67 block. So this is the supercharged engine, has the stronger rods, the stronger pistons. It's made for boost, it's ready for boost, and you can make hundreds of horsepower on this stock bottom end. I think this record is like 800 horsepower and they didn't even break it. Now, I'm only shooting for about 500 horsepower with this thing and maybe 400 at the tires. I'm not really going for something too crazy. Uh, the goal is just like 20 PSI of boost in this thing and call it good, uh, which, which I think is pretty mild with E85 and a turbo. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this thing off and uh, see what the heads look like, see what the uh, intake looks like, just uh, see if I've got a good runner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start taking this thing apart. So let's get to it. All right, so I've got the heads off. The cylinders all look fairly good. Actually, I haven't checked all this side, but I wanted to point this out. Um, I'm pretty sure this didn't happen when I pulled this off. So this dude may have destroyed a cylinder head. Uh, I'm not seeing any material on the head, so I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe somebody reused a gasket at some point, but um, that's not that's not great. Typically, if it were burnt, you'd see like a, a bent here of some sort, but yeah, I can't really tell. I'm not sure what happened here. So supposedly, the dude who had this car before the dude I bought it from turboed it. So I'm not sure if he had issues. And the guy I bought it from said it was just leaking oil like crazy. He would go through like a quart every day, basically. But it's probably because of this turbo drain that's still on here. I'm not worried about his oil leak he was talking about. So I'll have to just make sure that head looks good. But um, otherwise, though, I think I've got a winner here. I've got something that can run. So I'll go ahead and... Uh... Yeah, those cylinder walls... Look fine. So I'm looking at these rods in here, and um, I'm noticing that I'm not seeing any sort of any sort of gap here in these things. That means that these are L32 rods, which are supposedly the strongest one out there. It's a forged powdered metal, so it's not a typical forging process. But a lot of people think these are stronger than the L67s, so I'm not really sure. This might be a Series 3. This might be a Series 2 that somebody swapped Series 3 parts in. Now, it did come out of a Monte Carlo that was supercharged, so maybe it was stock L32 rods. This is not what you want to see. All right, so I've uh, I thought about this thing for a little bit. I think I can run this engine again. And what I'm going to do to test this is, what I'll, is I'll pull off the camshaft. There's suspicion that the bearings are probably bad in the camshaft, so... Uh, if those look fine, honestly, I might just run this thing and see what happens. Um, otherwise, I think I might just run this other one over here. I paid a lot of money for it. It was like $500 for this engine. It has some rusty cylinder walls. Like it's got some rings in the walls where the rings were. You know, it's got some rust rings there. So not the most ideal engine to run, but as long as it's not that bad, I might just send it, honestly. And if it does turn out to be bad... I could make something else happen here. It's not that hard to pull an engine out of this car. Compared to this thing, It's this thing is a real real debacle to pull out. But I could have this one out in a matter of a couple hours. This one's like an all-day thing. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the camshaft on this thing, pull off the timing chain, pull off the all the gears here, just slide it out, see what that looks like. And if it looks okay, I'll run this. If it doesn't look good, then I might just leave this here and debate about these other engines I have and see if I can make something work here out of those. All right, so I got the camshaft out of this thing and it uh, doesn't look terrible. A couple of the bearing lobes don't look amazing, but um, it's not that bad. I would run that again. However, the uh, the bearings in the block are pretty much toast. So I'm probably not gonna run that again, at least not yet without replacing these. I'm sure that they're all just like that. The worst one here up top looks like it's this one here. So I'm sure that that bearing that's sitting right here is not going to be good either. So I guess my plans around this engine right now are kind of going to be put on hold. I'll probably leave this one as a backup someday. And um, I think I'm going to try and just assemble one of these over here. So I think it's going to be this one right here. I'll pull off the heads, just make sure I'm, I'm okay with what's going on with this thing. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing down to the heads. I'm probably going to take that engine and get the bearings replaced on it. So... I know a guy who can do it. Um, never done that before. So I'll go ahead and pull off the heads here and get this thing sorted. Take this thing apart and see what it looks like and uh, build it from there. So I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Alright, so I'm working on assembling this engine. Got a couple things sorted out here. Again, I didn't want to show this whole thing on camera because you guys have seen me put together so many engines so many times before. So I figured I'd just show the finished process. But uh, along the way here, I decided to use an aluminum oil pan because I had one lying around. And um, turns out it was a lot more difficult than it should have been because it has all these extra gussets here and uh, bolt holes that I had to clearance this thing quite a bit to make this all fit. Uh, so clearance the motor mount, clearance the oil pan too. I'm hoping that the aluminum pan is a better solution long term here because it's, it's it shouldn't leak as much. It doesn't flex at all. Will never rust. I should also make it easier to thread in the oil fitting. So I'm going to put in the turbo oil drain now. And uh, most people will use this port right here. This is for the oil level sensor. Uh, but I don't want to use that hole because it's below the the level of fluid, right? So your fluid level should be somewhere around here probably, I'm guessing. Uh, if it's going this low, it's going to be setting off a low oil light. Um, so ideally, you want, you want your turbo drain to not have any restriction at all, and having to fight against that fluid that's already there seems to me like that could be a restriction. So I think ideally, you want the oil return line to, to be higher than that. Um, so I think I'm going to thread it in somewhere in here. I'm not quite sure yet, uh, but I'm going to have to drill a hole. So I'm just checking to see where everything is going to fit. I've got the AC compressor on here. I got the starter on here, so we're gonna make sure it's gonna clear all that. Get the motor mount. Um, the only thing I don't have is the exhaust and then the uh, the compressor lines. Uh, so I'll probably either go come up. I could even come up right here, uh, or over here, or right here. Those are my my ideas right now. Um, so I'll go ahead and take the pan off. Make sure there's nothing on the other side of that. And um, if I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and start drilling it. So we'll catch you back up later. All right, so I've got the engine basically assembled now. I've got the oil pan on here. I have my oil drain for the turbo on there. Uh, this time I was smart and actually plugged it before I put it in the car, so hopefully we won't have any spills. I've got the AC compressor on right now. The brackets for the engine mounts are still being painted, so I'm waiting for those to dry. I have a starter on here to mock it up to, but but um, you hear we see the engine. I've got the heads on using MLS gaskets, ARP head studs, 1.9 ratio rockers versus a 1.6 standard. So I'm keeping the stock cam in this car for, for now. Um, we'll see how this does with this gear ratio. So uh, with the rockers on, I went ahead and just spun the engine over a couple times. I got oil up here, so I feel pretty good about this. I primed the oiling system. So I don't know how long I'll run this engine in this car just because I'm not so sure about one of the cylinders. It looked kind of rough, but as long as it has decent compression, I think we'll be good. So I'll go ahead and put on the valve covers now and uh, put on the intake manifold, get this thing ready to go in the car. Then I'll have to work out the clutch situation. I do have a clutch for this. I'll have to get this off the engine stand before I can do that. But So here's a clutch for the car. This is gonna go on there as well soon. I have some new bolts for this too, some grade 10.9 bolts, uh, metric M8s for this. 
So I bought this one off of a friend of a friend. It was brand new, never ran. I went ahead and just wire wheeled the whole thing. It was kind of rusty. And uh, there is still some rust in this part, but that'll probably wear out. I don't want to wire wheel the uh, clutch surface itself. But um, so here's what this looks like. This is a, um, it's kind of a racy clutch. It's got uh, this puck system type of clutch material. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of power it's going to take, but based off of the design of this thing, it's probably going to take a lot of power. And uh, if not, I can always pull it out. It was free, so uh, it's not a big deal to me if I do if I do have to replace that. So I'll go ahead and start putting the valve covers and uh, intake manifold and uh, start getting this thing ready to go in the car. All right, so I've got the engine uh, at least somewhat assembled on the top end here. I've got the valve covers on it. Uh, the spacers I need for this aren't coming in the mail yet. You'll notice I've got some studs sticking out of this thing. I'm kind of putting something else on top of the valve covers, so I need to have these studs in here. So I can't actually like bolt on the valve covers completely until the, uh, the spacers arrive. I can get the engine in the car even without that spacer. Uh, so I'm working on making sure I have this clutch set up properly. What I had to do with this thing is pull off the hydraulic throwout bearing. So here you can see the um, the transmission. This is where the input shaft is. And here's the throwout bearing with the spacer. So I bought a quarter inch spacer because this seems like what people are running. Um, and I'll just kind of measure things just to make sure it's correct. But this seems to be what pretty much everybody does from what I'm reading online. I've got the flywheel machined down to 840 thousandths. That seems to be what most people are saying to do too. So I'm pretty sure this is a pretty standard setup here. I'll just do a double verification once I get this in the car, just make sure everything measures out properly. So I've got the seal on the spacer now. I had to pull it off of the uh, throwout bearing itself. And uh, I think I did that pretty well. And I've got this thing pretty much sandwiched down in here. It's a nice tight fit. Kind of looks cool. Too bad it's going to be hidden. But um, I think we're good to go with that. So I'll go ahead and throw this thing on the car. I'm going to go ahead and slide this on here. And uh, this whole thing will just bolt down on there. This one will be kind of not great. Uh, the spacer came with longer bolts too, thankfully, so didn't have to go to the hardware store for that. I don't like that they're a star drive, they're Torx bit, but um, it is what it is. I already got them here, so might as well run them. Go ahead and throw that last one in there. Yep, and then one more for, this that one probably won't go in too far, but I'll go ahead and just run these down. We're using the uh, common German's Torx spec of Guten Tight. All right, so just double checking to make sure clearances are good on this thing from what people are saying online. And with this mystery clutch I have, the clutch only has the word bully on it. Most people run with spec clutch. So spec is a brand that typically makes these conversion clutches, but this is just the one I had that was made. Um, I don't know anything about this one other than it looks pretty sporty. Went ahead and just measured all the clearances. To measure the clearance, what I did was I, I put this bell housing on the engine uh, measure the distance from the bell housing face to the um, the clutch fingers. Then also measured on the ground to figure out what the clearance was on the clutch. And I came out to I came out to 2.261 inches um, out from the clutch uh, from the face of the bell housing. So this is 2.261 inches out from here. And then I also measured it on the transmission itself. So I pushed the hydraulic throw up, throw up bearing down all the way and measured out how much of a travel it has, how much clearance you have all the way down to. Um, so uh, with the throwout bearing itself, it came out to 2.23 inches away from the bell housing. The throwout bearing has a 30,000 gap or um, wiggle room before it goes down all the way. And then it'll come out to 1.7 inches. So I think I'm pretty good here with this one. Every clutch is different. Every throwout bearing is different. For the Grand Prix, I ended up with like a um, hundred thousands of clearance, I think, in that one within the uh, the Holly spec. And, and maybe this one is just different. And it seems like that's kind of what people are doing with these um, transmissions. So, so indeed, I did need the spacer, the quarter inch spacer there on that. So um, I feel pretty confident this is going to work now. Now I just have to do the, uh, the old 
dance of trying to get this transmission to bolt onto the engine with the clutch on here. So you've typically got to like kind of rotate something to get them to fit. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that when you run these things, you don't use a bushing inside of these because there's no spot on there for it. So I think I have it close. So hopefully that doesn't give me an issue. It seems close to me, but we'll see. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try and get this thing bolted in, bolted together. And if it all goes well, we'll go ahead and throw it in the car and uh, be one step closer to finishing this thing. So I'm out here just kind of working on mocking things up now. It's the next day and um, working on getting this motor mount and these fuel rails to cooperate. This fuel rail is really testing my commitment to running the L36 engine mount on this engine with the L67 heads. If you know a lot about these engines, you know you have two options for heads. You have the naturally aspirated heads and you have the supercharged heads. The difference is the supercharged heads have the injector ports inside of the head itself, whereas the L36 would have it inside of the intake manifold. Being that they're inside of the heads, it means it places the injector further out this way and it would be further inward on the L36, uh, which means on this car, it's actually contacting the motor mount for the L36. So obviously these parts weren't designed to work together. It is what it is. Um, so I'm gonna have to clearance this motor mount quite a bit, I think. It doesn't look like much right now, but I know as this thing rocks backwards, it's, wanna, it's gonna wanna take up more and more of that space there. So I'm gonna have to be careful and try and sneak up on it with this one just because I don't have spares of these. Now, uh, even if I do compromise this side, it's not a big deal. I still have this side holding it on and this lower mount too as well. So there's at least two bolt holes that I'll be holding it on there. So as long as this one has some structural integrity, I think it's going to be okay. And then once I have that done, I can start working on the coil brackets. So I need to work on that too as well. Uh, and then once the coil brackets are done, I can bolt this on for good. Then once this is on, I can bolt on the intake manifold for good. You know, just step by step, I'll get this thing done. It feels like it's fighting me every step of the way, like all these small things I'm having to do to make everything fit, like the AC bracket and the motor mount and the AC lines, more to come on that. It's been, uh, been a bit of a challenge, but hopefully we get the end result I'm looking for here. All right, so I've got the motor mount pretty much machined how I need it to be. And when I say machined, I mean just flap discs and grinded. Uh, I also went ahead and just polished it up a little bit because it's aluminum. Why not? You know, might as well try and make it look good. So the fuel rail fits pretty good, I think now. So I've got some clearance there. This is about where it's going to be and I can still rock it back a little bit. I think that that's going to be fine as long as it doesn't knock on itself. Uh, we shouldn't have any issues. Typically, you want to make sure things aren't hitting each other and uh, vibrating uh, to cause false knock to appear in the sensors. So um, I just kind of keep that in mind. Every time I do something, I want to make sure things are not touching itself unless it's bolted together. If it's close, it needs to have an air gap. I think we're good with this one there for now. Uh, so next thing you need to do is make the coil brackets. To do that, I'm going to be running basically a sheet of aluminum up top here. It's going to be on both sides, eighth inch thick, and it's going to be spaced out from the valve cover. So just like LS is where you have the coil brackets bolted to the valve cover, I'm just going to be utilizing the valve cover bolts for it. So I've got some studs here instead of the bolts. I'm waiting for some spacers to come in the mail, but uh, otherwise though, I think I'm good enough to go for now to actually get this thing started. I think it's going to be kind of ridiculous the rear is gonna be really easy because there's nothing back there at all but the front you can see i've got the oil filled port i've also got the motor mount so things are going to be tight up front all right so here is one of the coils i'm going to be running as you can see here i'll be able to fit one of them 
pretty much right in here somewhere. It's going to be down a little bit like that. So not the cleanest install, but that's how it's going to have to be to fit. And uh, I can fit one more right here too. Not two. I can't fit two here. It would be too tight. So the other one's going to go right over here instead. The trick with this now is you can't just install these things flush with the valve cover. So you have to space this out. So on my measurements, it looks like about it's going to be about a half inch. Uh, but also, I can't space it out that far underneath this motor mount because it's too far. There's just not enough clearance there for it. So when the plate comes over here, it's going to have to hug the motor mount a lot more. Uh, because I can't just have it grab this bolt. It needs to grab this bolt too and this one as well. So uh, I'm going to have to have two separate plates in the front of this. So one of them is going to be a little bit higher and then the other one is going to be uh, quite a bit lower on this side because it can be because it can clear the valve cover like that. So there'll be two plates in the front. The one on this side will grab this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. And the one on this side will grab this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. So that's the plan for that. So gonna be a lot of uh, aluminum and blue going on in this car. Uh, I love the blue and silver color theme. So I'm gonna run with that because I can. This car is actually somewhat blue. So I'm just gonna take advantage of that. <laughs> so that's the plan. Okay, so here's what I'm doing for the uh, coil mount brackets. Uh, so I've got this sheet of aluminum here. It's barely wide enough to get cover this gap here. Um, I have these standoffs that are kind of like a pilot, a center punch type deal that threads in. Now these are M6s, but the, the actual thread is a quarter inch, but um, somehow it fits well enough that I can actually make this somewhat work. I went ahead and did this one already. This one came out pretty well. I noticed that um, these bolts are really directional, so you can't really, you've got to be careful not to screw this up. So I'll have to pay attention to that. I thought that these were all, you know, centered, but you look at this more and you realize that this bolt is further to the left and this one's further to the left and uh, different distances between the two of them. So this only goes in one direction. So I'll have to keep that in mind as I work on this thing. Uh, this one is basically done. This should bolt on. So I'm um, going to go ahead and work on this next one now too. I'll have it start on this side. The nice thing about aluminum though is that it scores really easily. Okay, so that's looking good. I'll take my block of wood and I'll use this to hammer this down. You can see I got this one cut out pretty well here so the engine mount fits nicely. I got it around the oil fill port too. So I just did a hole saw around that thing and uh, got it pretty close to where it needs to be so it didn't have to massage it at all. Got this one pretty well mas machined out too or massaged so so this one will sit like this on the head. The coil will go right over here but you know otherwise though the aluminum looks real good. I love the way this aluminum looks. So that, that's awesome. Some brushed aluminum is just, oh boy, that's some good stuff, man. I love it. Okay, so my spacers came in the middle and I finally went ahead and just threw those things on here. I think I'm going to have a bit of a change of plans here from what I was originally planning because of the, the issue with the coils. The problem with the coils is that, so I was going to recess them, 
down into the coils so that way part of it would stick down underneath it and that's why there's so much space down here uh, so the coils could, could go underneath it so that's the flange it bolts onto and so it would go uh, about a um, half inch or about three quarters of an inch down underneath it and then that would that would give that screw some space to actually go down to inside of the inside of the bracket because it would it would pierce through the bracket and I don't want it to pierce the valve cover too. Well, um, with the coils though, this plug boot will actually recess down too and that's that causes a problem because then that means I have to clear out all the space below the coil on the bracket for this to actually clear into this. That also means that the coil bracket will lose a lot of strength if I have to do that. So I would rather not have to do that. I think what the plan now is going to be is to put some studs into the brackets themselves from the other side forward. So basically bolt in some bolts. I'll drill a hole inside of this for each bolt, thread them inside of this plate too. So that way they, they stay inside of the plate permanently. And then I'll have little standoffs on the bolt holes. And that way these will still be spaced out from this bracket. Um, so that means I don't need to have these things as high off the car anymore. So I can actually get them a little bit closer, kind of like how this one is right here. So you can see this one actually has about three eighths of an inch of space, whereas these other ones are about seven eighths of an inch of space in them. So that's a bit much and the coils are getting pretty high. So, um, so I think I'm gonna try and bring them down just a little bit. Um, and then with doing that, that means I can, I can clean up a lot of this bracket, take out a lot of extra material around here too. So I'm gonna make it look decent, hopefully. The brushed aluminum looks amazing, by the way, so that's really cool, but um, it's a lot of it. I'll keep a little bit of it, but it's, this is too much, if you ask me. So what I'll do then is I, I'm going to figure out where these things are going to sit, mark the holes, start drilling holes, tap the holes for the threads, and start bolting them in. Figure out what size space I need. Also need to check the clearance on the motor mount too, if I'm running this distance. This one more than likely will stay where it's at. So this is the motor mount itself. This is a spot for it. That's it's gonna be tight, but I think it could work. Bolts for it. And just, you know, and you know, when you test fit something, you just wanna run it down hard. Don't even try to be easy with it. Just ram it in hard. Always works, right? Uh, that's not good. I think it's touching. This side looks okay. It might be okay, actually. So I might bring this one down a little bit then. I could I could make this one basically touch the valve cover and it won't be a big deal because the coil is gonna be outside of it. So all the clearancing is here on the outside right now. All right, so yeah, I've confirmed it is touching on the spacer right in here. That's uh, not great. I don't know, it's tight. And uh, I've taken out a lot of strength out of this motor mount already. And I don't know if I'm gonna pull out any more. Yeah, got that spot right here, it's rubbing it. So I decided I'll just probably clearance this a little bit, see how that goes. It's probably just rubbing on the inside now that it's raised up a bit more, so this is a little bit higher than it was before. So I won't worry about that, I'll clearance that some more later on. I've got uh, some new bits coming for the die grinder that I can use for aluminum. I learned the hard way that the uh, typical carbide bits don't work in aluminum that well because they clog up really easily and uh, basically destroy your bits. Uh, we'll get these tighter to the heads, get this thing moving, make this thing look decent. All right, so I've got all my bolt holes threaded and drilled, and uh, so now I have an idea of where all that's all going to sit. And uh, this is basically the theory right here, or the uh, working idea. Uh, these bolts are a little bit too long, the other ones I had were too short, so I'm probably going to order some 25 millimeter bolts, I think. So about some one inch bolts. That should get this clearance right about where it should be without too much stud sticking out of it, I think. 
because uh, right now it is a lot of stud. I think it really just depends on how much spacer I can get. So I need to do at least like a 0.68 inch spacer. So I might try and grab some three quarter inch spacers, uh, which means that, you know, it might end up being like this. So maybe these are fine, actually. I'll double check those measurements. But um, otherwise, though, I think I'm I think I'm ready to go ahead and just start cutting out all the extra material that I don't need. So really, all these things need to do is grab the valve cover bolts. So this one, this one, and this one. And aside from that, all the other, other stuff is just extra material. So um, I will probably cut out a little bit more of this just because it's hitting that, well, it's hitting the motor mount right now. So I'm gonna carve out a little bit more of that. I'll probably basically cut out everything outside of where that bolt hole is, where those bolt holes are. So just kind of make this look somewhat smooth and rounded on all the pieces here. Uh, same thing with this one. This is on the back valve cover. It's upside down right now, but this is cleared out for the alternator bracket. So I'll probably come in here like that and uh, maybe do some, I don't know, some cutouts through here, just kind of make it look cool. That way it's not just like a huge chunk of aluminum. So uh, that'll be the plan for that. And then uh, if I do this right, I can tuck all the wiring underneath the, the, uh, the coil bracket. So that way you don't see it at all. And hopefully we have a nice clean install for that. So um, I have a jigsaw. I'm going to use this to cut out some of this material. I'll just go ahead and uh, start marking up where I think I want to cut this stuff up at. And go ahead and start um, making some cuts. So here's what I'm thinking. I think the uh, brackets are gonna look something like this. Uh, I'll probably machine a little bit more material out of this once I get my uh, die grinder bit in the mail for aluminum. Now, I know this one sticks out quite a bit, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast here with this. You know, with the challenge I have here with this motor mount in the way, I can't really put that coil right here, so it's gonna have to come out a little bit, and that just happened to be the place where it fit the best. So that's not ideal, but it's gonna work out, I think, all right. Hopefully we'll be sturdy enough to, uh, you know, not break off at all. And then also I need to go through and just uh, get the spacing right to in the bottom. So I'm gonna get this side a lot tighter to the, uh, the valve cover by probably at least a half inch. And uh, this one over here, this one needs to be tighter too. It's way too tight against the motor mount, so I've gotta get it closer to the valve cover. So I'm gonna try and get at least maybe a quarter inch closer, I think, or an eighth inch, whatever I can get. Uh, and the rear is all good. No clearance issues in the back at all. Um, I really love the look of the aluminum with the blue. It's such a good look. All right, so I've spent a lot of time working this thing to try and get this somewhat sorted out, and I think I've got uh, a fairly good plan here. I have these four inch studs come out of the valve covers, and uh, they go down and they hold the whole thing down, the valve cover, the bracket, um, all part of one piece there. They are a little bit long uh, just because I had to readjust things. So I bought four inches at first and realized I could probably get away with like a three inch or a three and a half inch. But um, I think um, I'll probably leave it the way it is. Honestly, these, these weren't cheap, so um, I didn't want to cut them down quite yet. The studs really help align all these spacers. So I have about an inch of two inches of spacers on the, uh, the normal side of this. Uh, but over here, you can see this side's a little bit lower, and that's to clear over or underneath the motor mount. And this side has about a inch and three quarters, so it's a lot closer to the valve cover. It's not touching, but it is a lot closer. And um, with the coil being on this side, there's no issue with those bolts being on the back side of that. So no concerns with that. And uh, again, over here, all good, plenty of clearance. Things are looking good. Um, then I also have these bolts, bolts on the back side of it for the coils. So a coil will go here and here. I did shave off a little bit of this, trying to make it look a little bit neater. That way it's not just a uh, sheet of alum aluminum that you're looking at. That way you can see some valve cover, some blue, some silver. So it's not just all that one piece. Uh, I've clearanced it for, for this bracket. This will actually fit there properly, hopefully. 
Uh, for now, I am going to be running that coil over here on this side. I will have to get a special park spark plug wire for that. But uh, otherwise, though, that should be fine. Shouldn't have any issues with that one. Things are looking pretty good, and I think I can start moving on to the next things. So since I'm using my custom intake manifold that I built myself, the sheet metal manifold, you know, with that crazy wide cutout of the plenum and the lower intake manifold, I need to make a gasket that will actually seal this whole thing. Uh, so I have some sheet gasket right here and uh, I'll basically cut this thing up to make it fit that perfectly and then just RTV the one side of it get that all to seal on the plenum itself so that's what I'm gonna try and do for this and hopefully that works out there's some some spots here where it's a really really thin wall for it but um, you know otherwise I think it's gonna work out pretty well so I'm gonna go ahead and get to that we will catch back up here in a minute All right, so I've got this gasket basically ready to go here, I think. This is my custom-made intake manifold gasket because of my weird cutout. There's nothing that's going to fit off the shelf for this, so I went ahead and just made my own. Used just a um, sheet of um, material. I went ahead and tapped these coolant ports with pipe threads. One of them is a little bit loose, so I've got some gray RTV in there. I'm not sure how that's going to hold up, but um, I think it could be good. It's, it's a little loose, but um, I'm going to wait for that to dry up a little bit before I torque it down all the way. And uh, once that's all ready to go, then I can go ahead and, and uh, get this gasket down here. Uh, I'm gonna do one side of RTV and the other side with white lithium grease. Uh, the theory is that if I grease the one side, then it won't tear when I pull it apart if I ever have to pull it apart. Uh, or at least that's the theory. Um, and then the gray RTV is a seal because it's, it's not completely flat because it, it, that's just what happens when you weld a big flat piece like that, at least with me. So I'm <laughs> um, going to use that to seal the whole thing up and hopefully don't have any intake manifold leaks. Progress is happening. Progress is slow. Been in the holidays lately, so I haven't really done a whole lot with this, but we're getting back into it now. Intake is on. This is what it looks like. This is the finished-ish product. So I put on this plate to basically say this is what this engine is. So that way when I go to car shows or cars and coffee, people don't ask and be like super perplexed about it. Um, they'll see this and it'll make sense. And this is actually a series three long block. It has L32 rods in here. So I'm counting it. <laughs> so this is all basically put together for the intake at least. But the engine is in the car finally. I still have some stuff to work out with the exhaust and like the shifter cables. But that's gonna do it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh,